In this video, we're going to solve d2y by dx squared take away 4dy by dx take away 12y equals 0. This is a second order differential equation, homogeneous equation, okay, um, that I'm going to show you a formal way of solving this problem in this video that you won't take forward. The reason why I'm going to show you this method is so that you can kind of see where the next method using the auxiliary equation actually comes from. So you've got an idea of how that works. Uh, so I'm putting this here for kind of interest sake, um, because the next stage of this, uh, when we're using the auxiliary equation, which is faster and easier to work with, um, we're going to need to understand where these kind of solutions are really coming from. Okay. So let's take a look at this. And in the previous video, I suggested that it looks similar to a quadratic equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of factorize it, okay, um, using our quadratic equation knowledge. So if this was a quadratic of x squared take away 4x take away 12 equals 0, what I would be doing is I would be saying, right, I want two numbers that multiply together make minus 12, but add together to make minus 4. And that would be minus 6 and plus 2. So what you can do, and this is a method of factorizing quadratics, I can write this as d2y by dx squared, take away 6dy by dx, plus 2dy by dx, take away the 12y equals 0. So I'm breaking that middle term up into two terms. Why do I do that? Well, when I'm factorizing quadratics, I then factorize the left-hand side. Well, sorry, the, the first two terms. And then I factorize the next two terms. And then I can bring them together. Now, I'm not going to factorize the left-hand side okay, into two bits. Um, instead, I'm going to identify that the first two terms are the same as me writing d by dx of... Well, dy by dx would be the first term, because the if I differentiate dy by dx, I get d2y by dx squared. And here I would have 6 lots of y, take away 6y, because if I differentiate this, I get take away 6dy by dx. So those two terms, I've, diff I've pulled the derivative out, effectively. These two, term these two are the same. Over here, I'm just going to factor out the 2. So I'd have 2 lots of dy by dx take away 6y equals 0. Now, it's no coincidence that inside both of these brackets, I have dy by dx take away 6y. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a substitution. So I'm going to let u be equal to dy by dx take away 6y. So I'm going to use a substitution uh, to substitute in those two pieces of the puzzle. So what that means is that my derivative here becomes d by dx of u, so du by dx, plus two lots of u is equal to 0. OK? Now. To solve this differential equation, I can use uh, take 2u from both sides and use separation of variables. Or you can use an integrating factor. I'm going to use an integrating factor because that's what we've been using in the first section. So the integrating factor would be e to the power of the integral of 2 dx, which is equal to e to the 2x. So multiply through by e to the 2x, I'll get e to the 2x du by dx, du by dx, plus 2e to the 2x times u is equal to 0. So the left-hand side is a perfect derivative, d by dx of e to the 2x times u is equal to 0. And then when I integrate both sides, I get e to the 2x times u is equal to, well, the right-hand side is just going to integrate to some constant, so let's call that c. And so if I divide through by e to the 2x, I get uh, u equals c e to the minus 2x. OK, so that's where I'm currently at. I've now got u is equal to c e to the minus 2x. So let's put that back into here, shall we? So I've now got 
that dy by dx, take away the 6y, is equal to u, which I've now worked out as c e to the minus 2x. So we now have a first order differential equation, which I can solve. I can't do it by um, separation of variables, this one, but I can use an integrating factor. So I'm going to have another integrating factor. Now, I guess I should call that i1, and I'll call this i2. And that's going to be equal to e uh, to the power of the integral of minus 6 dx, which is equal to e to the minus 6x. So we're going to multiply through by e to the minus 6x. So e to the minus 6x dy by dx, take away 6e to the minus 6x times y is equal to c e to the minus 8x. Because I've got the e to the minus 2x times e to the minus 6x. The left-hand side is a perfect derivative, d by dx, of e to the minus 6x times y, which is equal to the c e to the minus 8x. Okay. Right, then I am going to integrate both sides. So e to the minus 6x times y is equal to... Uh, c e to the minus 8x will integrate to um, minus c over 8 e to the minus 8x and I'll have another constant so what I'll probably want to do is go back and call this c1 I could use another constant k but I'm just going to go through and call these c1s and there, okay? So I've got another constant now, C2. Okay. Now, um, at this point, I'll multiply through by e to the 6x, or divide through by e to the minus 6x, whichever you prefer. And that's going to be y is equal to minus C1 over 8. Then e to the minus 8x divided by e to the minus 6x will get me e to the minus 2x plus c2 times e to the minus e to the 6x rather. Okay. Now I could leave it like that, but c1 over 8 is a bit messy, isn't it? So what I could instead do is write that as y equals some constant capital A e to the minus 2x plus some constant capital B, e to the 6x, where the a is the minus c1 over 8 and the b is c2. Now, that is my general solution. It's a second order differential equation that we started with, and so there are two unknowns, a and b. Okay, So I would need two pieces of information in order to work out a and b. The second point is that this method is quite convoluted, okay? It's quite a few, few steps involved. So good job that we won't have to use this method going forward. The other thing that you need to spot, and hopefully are spotting, isn't it surprising that we have e to the minus 2x and e to the 6x, and the minus 2 and the 6 were the two numbers we started with where we were saying we needed two numbers that multiply together to make minus 12, but add together to make minus 4. Is it a coincidence that we would arrive at those two numbers appearing there? The answer is no, it's not a coincidence. And that's going to what's going to lead us on to looking at the auxiliary equation and how we can use that to inform what our solutions should look like.